Now, it was a day of elation for some students opening their A-level results. For most, their first ever public exams because of COVID. In London, 39% of results were an A or A-star, making it the second best performing region in the country. But overall, students saw the biggest ever drop in grades, so there was some disappointment too. Callum Watkinson reports. <laughs> what? You got a free A. What? How did you do? I got a triple A. What? <laughs> At Riverside School in Barking, Alex, Nathan and Bernard all bagged better grades than they expected today. For two of them, places at Oxford and Warwick are waiting. So I got three A stars and a B. Well done. So, yeah, I'm very happy with that. It was better than I thought I'd get. I thought I'd get like an A, B. So I'm happy. I was expecting like A star A, B or maybe like A, B, B. I wasn't expecting triple A. Wow. Nathan will now seek a place through clearing, but the busy morning at the University of East London's clearing centre suggests he may not find it as easy as he might have last year when elite Russell Group universities had to base their offers on assessments, not mock results. Top tier universities have reduced the number of places they're offering this year. They are trying to correct an excess that resulted from COVID uncertainty. Now, at a time when there are almost record numbers of prospective students, that's had a trickle-down effect, which is actually good news for universities like this. Our numbers are kind of doubled at the moment. Last year, predicting and looking at trends was, was very challenging and not knowing when the students did or did not do exams and how that the grades would be evaluated was up in the air till very late. Overall in London, 39% of exams were graded A or A star this year, making it the second best performing region in the UK. That's down from nearly 48% last year, but the city saw the biggest improvement in the country since the last normal year in 2019. Not bad for students who missed so much direct learning and a practice run at GCSE. At Newham Sixth Form College, they have renamed Results Day Celebration Day. Alia was inspired by the pandemic to pursue a career in healthcare and was awarded a distinction in her BTEC and a place at Westminster University. We've all come a long way um, with COVID and um, the fact that we missed our GCSEs and all that, but at the end we stood back up, we rose back and we've got the grades that we want. So I think it's a very big thing for all our students. There was a lot of anxiety for them, especially a lot of them hadn't set exams before. We did lots of preparatory um, work around examinations and support. Higher education is still trying to get back to normal, not the only industry for which that is true. But it's a delicate process when you're stock in trade is hopes and dreams. Callum Watkinson, ITV News, East London. Let's talk to someone who knew university wasn't for her and instead focused her energy elsewhere to great success, going on to win The Apprentice and, importantly, opening two businesses in the capital. It's Karina Lepore. Hello, welcome. Hi, Thanks for having me. So you didn't get the results that you wanted, but even so, you, you knew that university really wasn't for you. No, I knew from a very young age that I was more, I had this burning desire to be an entrepreneur, I liked to have my own things, so I knew that business was more my sort of avenue over like university sort of route. Um, so yeah, I knew early on, I did do my A-levels, I did go on to do it, but it was more of a formality. I left school, I then stayed on at sixth form, so I didn't actually go to college or anything, I just stayed on did my A-levels, more again to sort of please my parents. I know there's a lot of pressure for young people to, to do the pleasing part, but for me, I knew from a yeah, young age it wasn't my avenue. I suppose that's the thing, isn't it? For generations, we've had this expectation in many families. You go to school, you do your A-levels, and then you go on to university. But you, you have this lovely phrase, you said, I took a wigglier, more exciting line. You just found your way through, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. And that's exactly that. There will be sort of hurdles and challenges and like, well, like I must have said, a wiggly sort of line, not a straightforward line, not an easy route by, by far. I'm not saying there, there is an easy route coming out. Getting your, getting your A-level results or your GCSEs, you, you know, if you don't get the grade you want, you're then going to panic and think, oh, my route, my path is no longer my path. Where, what am I going to do? But yeah, like I would have said before and like I still stand by, I feel like our journey's already written. My journey was written. That wasn't my path. I took a different route. And I, where I am now, I wouldn't have been if I had sort of gone down a different route. 
With one of your earlier businesses, you said you'd wish that you had done uh, an accounting course and that that might have helped you. And I thought that was quite interesting because actually when we talk about apprentices and vocational courses, so many people still think it's for construction, hair and beauty, plumbing. And actually there's such a wide variety of things you can do without going to university every single day of the week. 100%. I totally agree. And I did say that, that I, I did open up a business when I came out of school. I opened up a business. I used to source stock, buy to sell. I was that type of person. I would just know my product and want to sell it. But I wouldn't know the back sort of end of a business, the accounts, the numbers, the cost line, the margins, everything you need to know. And now I do know. But that's more took me like, well, I don't know, 15 years to now learn. If I had all them skills, yeah. I would have had a successful business from, yeah, 20, 20 years old. Now, you've got these South London businesses, just very briefly, if you don't mind, what do you look for in the young people that come into you? Passion, enthusiasm, I love drive, I love every... If you're a young person and you're driven, you come, come and learn from me. I'm happy to instill sort of life skills, leadership skills, people skills, everything that I have, I would love to give on to other young people. I don't need to pay huge fees for that, do you, Karina? No. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Still to come, the weather forecast.